I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com or phone us at 604-924-5504. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is real estate expert Ross Kay from the WealthyHomeowner.ca. Welcome back to the show, Ross. And thanks for having me back, Jim. Questions are being asked about increasing condo prices in the Vancouver suburbs. Now, the Real Estate Association is claiming that condo prices in the Burbs are up 25% over the past year in some select places like Langley, up 48% in one year. Now, are, are is this propaganda? Are these real numbers? Or are people uh, accepting these numbers and paying prices higher than they really should? Okay, so what happens, as we know in British Columbia right now, your average selling price at the provincial level is down over $100,000 in the last year. It's down $100,000. As I've stated on your show before, that is a North American record for a province or a state. Then the commentary comes up that there is bidding wars for condominiums still ongoing in British Columbia. I'm not going to say that there are there are not upward immediate pressures on price in British Columbia condos and your out, outer markets of uh, Vancouver right now. What I'm saying is is that the buyer representation, the buyer's agents, the home buyer themselves are being lulled into a false sense of housing market price change that is not real. So what you have when a correction happens is one category of homes is first hit. And as we know in British Columbia, it was ultra luxury class homes and that has knocked off a huge volume of your average selling price. Even though you'll, your listeners will, under, will have heard me say in the past that we don't use average selling price we don't use average selling price. We understand the average selling price is actually the average purchase price paid. So to us, the average purchase price paid is one of the most important metrics of a housing market. And when you understand how that metric uh, results in changes uh, to the overall mar- how the market's working, and then when you under- when you compare that particular metric against financing metrics, you know what what has happening in a marketplace. So had millennials had a generation uh, 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 squeeze, had they listened to our advice given here on your show over a year ago, remove yourselves from the market. Use social media to stop buying. Stop buying today. And two months from now, you're going to be able to bought purchase a home for less money. That's simply how a real estate market functions. Where the confusion happens is is at a market which, that is ongoing right now. So so you've lo- you've lost a massive segment of your market is gone. Massive. We're talking as I mentioned before historical proportions here that market is gone. Now there still may be other little segments that are right now that are still plugging away, but those markets cannot support themselves on their own. It's the overall market itself that dictates where housing prices are going to be going going forward. What the home buyers are doing right now in, in uh, certain parts of uh, British Columbia, in certain segments or categories of uh, purchase price areas, um, the, they're, they're still going out in enough numbers where the people who own the, the, the homes that they want to buy 
simply cannot move on to the next home, or they realize that the home that they want to buy is currently falling in price. So they're refusing to move. Because no one is being a voice for the millennials, the first-time buyers, or even the second-time buyers that are trading up, uh, i.e. maybe moving from a lower-priced condo into a townhouse or a more expensive uh, condo. Because there's not a voice out there giving them uh, an explanation of what's happened to the market, they're still pushing uh, their desire to get a home into the marketplace. And the marketplace is not responding. Now, of course, as all housing markets function, sooner or later it's going to collapse. That's just the way that it, that's just the way that it goes. What I suspect what you're also going to see is when we're looking at data for this month, you're, you're actually going to see in a place like the, the real estate board of Greater Vancouver is probably going to report that uh, home prices year over year are back in line to with what they were a year ago for the month of May. You're probably going to hear that report. What you're not going to hear is that people are buying now homes for 30% less than what they were selling for last year at the uh, around August, September. You're not going to hear that that drop has taken place. Where you're, what you're going to see, though, is you're going to start to now start to see the problem with your benchmark price. Because your benchmark price and the, the average selling price that's going on are now go going to start to have their crossover where the benchmark falls while the average selling price was stable. That's a problem when you rely on benchmark price. Home buyers in the province of British Columbia are being lied to. There's no argument at all. We'll have more with Ross K. right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Lotus Ventures Inc. is a BC-based medical marijuana company poised to launch into the rapidly evolving cannabis sector. Lotus is in the final review stage of the Health Canada approvals to become a licensed producer, having arranged facility financing of up to $12 million, plus building permits for its prototype indoor production facility. Shares trade under the symbol J on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Visit our website at lotusventures.ca. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, we've heard claims of people in the greater Toronto area, home buyers this spring, asking to get out of the deals they signed. Which of those buyers know, and what about the owners of the homes they bought? Yeah, so I've, I've saw, uh, I've read that myself in the paper a, a couple of times here too, Jim. Um, now, uh, we don't have members that are in that situation because, you know, part of the, part of what we're doing uh, is is to alleviate those those sort of problems. Um, what I can tell you is this: is that if there was an offer, a someone purchased a home anywhere in Canada today, virtually anywhere, I can get them out of the deal. I can get them out of the deal on several different ways. Generally speaking, where I, where I can get them out of their deals is is because they haven't been told the truth. And the beautiful thing about the way organized real estate works today is, from our perspective is the fact that the truth is not being told to people at all the time. They're only hearing part of the story, the part of the story that makes a commission happen. When the entire story is, is told, then people generally will make a different decision. That's what the lawyer comes in. When the lawyer hears that, oh, they may not have made that this decision to buy this home had they been given all these details, and you were the professional that they were relying on to get those details from, all of a sudden you have grounds for the deal to be killed. Now, um, this is the same thing that we are talking about in the previous segment on pr housing prices. The reason home buyers in British Columbia are paying more for the condominiums this year is because someone hasn't told them the whole story. They've used real estate stats, not data, to present a, a version of a story to them in order to make commission. 
if they were told the entire story, those commissions would be way, way, way more difficult to earn, and in many cases, they wouldn't be earned at all. This is what's going on in the GTA right now. People went out in March and believed all the real estate stats that were being told. Those stats are not data. Those stats are saying something about the market that actually they're not even, they're, they're claimed to be saying something about the market that they in no way measure on any circumstance, never have, never will. So if you're a home buyer and you made a decision using this information and it was supplied to you from someone, then you can get out of the deal. Flip side, contracts. I can virtually guarantee that you cannot give me a contract written by any real estate sales rep in Canada today, hand it to me, and I cannot show you a way to get out. Because the, the contracts are not written in an ironclad format. They, now, if the, if the contract goes to the lawyer and the lawyer approves it, then yeah, maybe I couldn't find a loophole. Um, but if it doesn't go to the lawyer, I can guarantee I can virtually find a loophole in every contract. There's another out. Sellers on the other side, sellers on the other side, they're looking to enforce these contracts now. Because if, if someone is saying, hey, I think the market has changed, I'm starting to hear about all these new listings coming on, now the bidding wars are slowing down, oh, we're panicking, now the fear of missing out becomes a fear of making a mistake. F-O-M-M, not F-O-M-O. -O. Um, those folks uh, want to get out of the deal, and I can get them out of the deal. On the, on the seller side, I also know how to present it so that the buyer would never consider trying to get out of the deal. They will be shaking in their boots because they'll find out what the huge financial ramifications of that would be. Now, the only way I can do that is, and I can claim both things is, because I know I'm going to have incompetency on the other side. It's not going to be me talking to me. It's going to be me talking to someone else. And our strategists, this is this is how our strategists um, are able to provide their information. They look at it from our point of view, which is unique. And that's how you get out of deals in the GTA right now. We'll have more with Ross K. right after this. I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp., RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Rideout Shear Zone in Ontario. With grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold, a drill program will commence this spring to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork. For more information, visit our website, rmroyalty.com. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, millennials across Canada are wondering, should they buy a house or a home, depending on your definition, or should they be, pre be prepared to rent for the rest of their lives? What's the best advice? Uh, for the vast majority of millennial Canadians, in other words, for the vast majority of all of us, as we've gone through different stages in our lives, um, home ownership will be your path to financial success. Now, what I mean by that is, is that although your parents may have purchased a home in the 70s, 80s, and they've received a huge windfall in their minds because of house price gains, you can expect to receive the same windfall on a property that you purchased today, as long as you're going to own it over the next 30 to 40 years. Now I'm gonna. Everyone is different. Everybody needs to make the decisions at different moments in time. So, so don't get. This is a general comment. What people need to understand is this: if you purchase a million-dollar home today, and over the next 25 years pay off your mortgage, you will be a millionaire. That is the truth. No one can change that. Now. Will inflation eat away at what that million dollars is worth 25 from year from now? Of course. Now, are we going to assume over 25 years your home doesn't go up in value at all? No, that would be, that would be asinine to think that way. Your house is going to go up a certain amount. It's going to go down, but it's also going to go back up over a 30 to 40 year period. So when someone asks, should we buy 
or should we rent? It is a very, very, very small segment of the marketplace who can benefit by renting over owning because of human behavior. If someone is to tell me that they are willing to somehow get their paycheck deposited into their stockbroker's account or their financial advisor's account and that they have no way of accessing that money, then they could decide to rent. But I know that is not legally possible in Canada. I know that that has not happened for the 5,000 people that we tracked over the last 40 years. And I certainly know that of the millions of real estate transactions that we've reviewed, that that is not how people act. What your home is, it's a bank account. And everybody needs to understand that. It's the bank account where you put money in every month and you don't have a say in the matter. Because if you don't put that money in that bank account, someone's going to kick you out in the curb. That's what's going to happen. So you have no choice. You put money into that bank account. That money's not going to disappear, folks. If you own your house 30 to 40 years, I can guarantee that money's not going to disappear. Now, you may not get uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8% interest on that money. You know, that that's what's going to happen. What happens to interest rates over the next 25 years is going to dictate that. But what I'm telling you is, is that that money you're putting into the bank, it's going to be there. And I don't know of any other way for a regular person to make that kind of savings happen. You're not when you're still going to have to have a place to live, rent. Not only will you still have all your other expenses that are ongoing, but on top of all of life's events, you are going to be able to put money aside and never touch it. When that new car comes along, you're not going to, you're going to be able to say, no, I'm not going to take out $10,000 and spend it on a new car. When you're, when you're, um, your anniversary comes up and you want to take a round-the-world trip, you're going to be able to say, no, I'm not going to touch that money. That's what's different about a house. As a homeowner, your home is your bank, the same way that your savings account is. And other than a TFSA, it's the only place you can put money where you are not going to pay any tax on it. So should millennials buy a house? Yes. They would be foolish not to. The vast... 95% of Canadians would be foolish not to buy a home because it's going to set them up for the retirement. That said, when you buy your house, in other words, is it this year? Is it next year? Is it the year after? That will dictate how your life looks uh, 30 to 40 years from now. Timing the market is of utmost importance. Minimizing your housing expense is of utmost, most important. How you renew your mortgage, how you do everything about your house is of utmost, utmost important. You need a plan. You need monthly advice to what's going on, in my opinion. And as long as you follow that and you just sit back, check it out, double check, triple check, make sure everything's the truth. As long as you do that, 30 to 40 years from now, if you purchase a million dollar house today, you'll be a millionaire. It's as simple as that. Many Canadian homeowners are now over 60 and looking at today's market, wondering what to do. Do they actually have any options or are they best to just put it off? Well, they, I'll, I'll say they have a plethora of options. They have unlimited options available to them right now. They just don't know about them. They are still constrained by the banks and have the banks uh, giving advice to everyone. I read a bank, a TD Bank uh, economist sent out a report to all TD shareholders or all TD, all TD customers. And I'm reading this report, and I, I'm looking at it, and, and I'm saying to myself, you know something, I know this sounds sensible. I know that this really sounds like I've heard what I've heard for the last 25 years. You know, I know I really should believe it. But then when I look at it, I also know that it's not the truth. It's purpose, its sole goal of the bank is to encumber their clients so that the bank can earn more money from them. The bank is not Mr. Nice Guy, and they never have been. They never will be. The bank is out there to provide a service and get as much money from you as possible. 
what I can't what I can't believe is, is that we listen to it and that as homeowners, homeowners believe it. When I'm sitting here sitting with four years worth of data that shows what what they're doing, it just doesn't make sense. Can it, let me let me explain it to you this way, Jim. Canadians are so sensitive to interest rate changes, and they have been, Jim, since 1990 till today. So sensitive to interest rate changes. A little tiny 0.1% change in the five-year uh, discounted mortgage rate in Canada carries huge consequences across this country. People don't understand that the discounted rate in February versus the discounted rate today has dropped about 0.3%. So in other words, I think there were about 2.4% uh, was the dis common discounted rate in February, and now it's dropped back down to 2.1%. The only reason that those houses sold in the GTA during that period of time was because of that little tiny interest rate drop. That's the only reason. Now. Because we look at real estate market in a totally different way, we can go back from 1980 till today, and we can show you where every single change of interest rate impacted the real estate market. In some ways, it created the illusion of house price gain that months later made people go out and buy houses. Oh, you're seeing that in BC right now, aren't you? You're seeing that out in BC right now, the illusion of house price gain is bidding wars, people paying too much for a house. Right? Which, what you need to do is, everybody who's listening, you need to understand the real estate market functions in one way, it functions in one way only, no matter what anybody tells you anywhere. When you look at the metrics that measure a market, it is 100% precise. Ross, you've been telling us homes are more affordable today than they were in the 80s and 90s. Yet, of course, home prices have gone up 150% since then. Why do you say buyers are or homes are now more affordable right now? We measure homes in a totally different way than everyone else does. When you look at the affordability calculators that the bank economists use to fool everybody, to con you into paying more to the bank over the lifetime of your, of, of your home ownership, we look at it a totally different way. We look at the cost of ownership. That's all we look at. How much is it going to cost us to own a home? What I'm telling you today is the cost of purchasing a single detached home in Vancouver or Toronto today is less than the cost of purchasing that same single de detached home in 1990. The cost. People confuse the, the uh, cost of a home with how much money you're investing into the home. The investment component has so much greater right now than it was in the, 90, in the 1980s and 90s. People have no idea. They're, 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 they're believing these GDP to uh, income uh, comparison or the GDP to mortgage debt comparison that all these global economists we're talking thousands of economists around the world uh, reference every day. The truth of the matter is, folks, these, these economists don't know how a housing market functions because they don't know how homeowners interact with their homes. It isn't taught to them at a post-secondary level. Everything they're doing is guessing. They listen to some other expert who's listened to some other expert who's listened to some other expert who's believed all the myths. That's how it works. The cost of owning your home has nothing to do with the principal portion of your mortgage. If you're putting money into your home as a savings account, which is what a principal payment is, and you're doing that at six times the rate at what somebody was in 1990, please don't try to tell me that you're not getting way further ahead because I know in numbers you are. And this is where the confusion takes place. When you per on the day that you purchase a home, the very day that you're purchasing it, you should be calculating the 25-year cost of ownership of that home. What I can tell you is, is that in, in 2017, the 25-year cost of ownership projection is lower 
than what you would have had in the 1990s, buying the identical house. So please, don't come running to me saying it's an affordability issue. One, it's an education issue. People need to know, understand how the financing of home ownership works. And two, it's got to do the commingling of people in need of subsidized housing, housing with affordable housing. I'm sorry, folks. If you, if you live in British Columbia and you want to live in Vancouver, you have to understand you're living in the second most financially powerful, uh, uh, city in this, in this country to live in. Housing, if you think that you have the right as a young first time home buyer to buy in the most expensive market in the country, you're going to lose. You're going to be, you are going to be disappointed and you're going to have decades and decades of disappointment. The same as the people who think that they have the right to buy in downtown Toronto or live in subsidized housing in downtown Toronto. Look, I, I want the homeless to have a place to live. I don't want people, which is going on in Toronto right now, to be living in multi-million dollar homes and having it subsidized by the government. I think that's just lunacy. Um, and that's where the confusion over affordability and subsidized comes in. That's where the confusion over the cost of ownership, the cost of owning a home comes in. Because everybody's talking about apples, they're looking at oranges, and they got potatoes in their pockets. Nobody, uh, outside of our firm, there is nobody in, in, as far as we know, North America today, that speaks about home ownership the way it actually works. Believe me, folks, it is, it costs you less money today to own a home, the exact same home, than it did 30 years ago. Ross, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on, Jim. My guest has been real estate expert Ross K from the wealthy homeowner.ca. You're listening to HowStreet.com radio. Any questions for us or our guests can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.